Today I'm going to show you two awesome ways of starting peppers from seed, both sweet peppers and hot peppers, or some people call them chilies. Let me know down in the comments if you're a sweet pepper person or a hot pepper person, or maybe both, and let me know your favorite pepper variety. Peppers have a really long growing season, so to get the most peppers out of that season, uh, especially in northern climates, you need to start them early, so six to eight weeks before your last frost date. If you don't know when your last frost date is, just Google your zip code or area and last frost date. Now, if you look it up and it is less than six to eight weeks before your last frost date, don't worry, just go ahead and sow these seeds ASAP. Or if you have a really short growing season, I would suggest getting transplants from the garden center that are already up and growing. That's gonna speed you along by eight to 12 weeks. The only negative to transplants from the garden center is you're just gonna have less variety than if you were choosing from a seed catalog. There are two main ways of starting your peppers and I'm gonna go through both of them because uh, each one works better for a different type of pepper. No matter which method you choose, I start them both the same way and that is with a 50-50 mixture of water and hydrogen peroxide. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let the seeds soak in that mixture for about five minutes. What that does is it gets your seeds off to a faster, healthier start. It kills any type of bacteria that's on the seed so it won't linger once it's been planted. It also softens the seed coat, which actually makes it germinate quicker. All right, now that they've soaked for five minutes, we come to the fork in the road. But don't worry, I'm gonna give you the road map so you know which way to go. The first way is a traditional way in some kind of container with seed starting mix. And you wanna use seed starting mix, especially for peppers, because it's light, it drains well, it's sterile, so you don't have any type of bacteria or fungus gnat eggs, so you don't have those problems to worry about from the get-go. Peppers are a little temperamental, and we wanna do everything we can to get them off to the best start possible. So I've got my tray filled with pre-moistened seed starting mix. You wanna make sure it's pre-moistened because it's hard to moisten it once the seeds are in there. And we're putting two seeds in each cell. That way we have an insurance policy in case one doesn't germinate, you'll still have uh, one in that cell. And we're gonna cover these with about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of vermiculite or perlite. It's a lighter substance than the uh, seed starting mix. And so it retains just enough moisture, but not enough to really foster damping off, which is the disease where the seedling looks fine one day and the next day it's pinched at the bottom and it's fallen over wilted dead. Uh, it also deters fungus gnats from laying their eggs in the potting soil. And then remember to label it. And then we wanna water these from below, which means sitting them in a tray of water and just making sure they soak up all the water that they need until the tops of this potting soil or the vermiculite uh, get a little bit darker so you know that they're damp. Then remove it. Do not let it sit there in that tray. Now there is an easier way to do it and that is with these trays here. These completely changed my seed starting life a couple years ago. Uh, these are from Gardener Supply. I will leave a link down in the description of the video. But you fill up the reservoir and then there's these tray, these uh, stands that go in here, just like this. And there's a wicking mat that goes along the top and goes down into the water on the end. What that does is that soaks up and keeps this always wet. And when you set these on top of them, it wicks the water just enough, not enough to keep them soggy, but enough to keep them perfectly moist right through germination, uh, up until you take them out and plant them in the garden. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Not 100% necessary. Just gonna save you some work. The final step is to place your seed trays on a heat mat. That's what this is right here. These are relatively inexpensive. I would recommend getting one with a digital uh, thermostat so you can always make sure these are around 75 degrees. That's the optimal temperature. If you have this extra depth here of this watering tray, if you get these trays, I would bump it up to 80 degrees just to make sure that heat gets up there enough. But bottom heat is almost essential for peppers, especially for hot peppers. It's gonna help them germinate a lot faster and if you are in a climate where you're needing that, definitely want these. Now once you've got all your seeds sown in the tray, you're gonna put on a humidity dome or something. These trays come with these humidity domes if you are growing in something else plastic wrap, anything works. It's just to keep the humidity in there 
until the seeds sprout. So once you've got 50% germination, you can take this off. You don't need to use it again till next season. Um, you also can turn the heat mats off at this point. Now, light is not needed for pepper seeds to germinate. They can germinate in the dark, so you don't need any type of lighting on them. However, once they've germinated and they put their little heads right through the soil, immediately, ASAP, they need light. And now if you have a south-facing window that gets at least six hours of direct sunlight every day, it can be filtered by clouds. Hello, England. But it needs that direct light hitting those leaves every single day for at least six hours. If you don't have that, and I think most people probably don't, um, or a greenhouse, then you're going to need some kind of grow light. Now, don't get freaked out. I know this is where new gardeners get a little worried, but I'm going to make it really easy for you. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a professional grow light like this one. There are options. The cheapest way is to use one of these clip-on lights. You can also use one of the long shop lights, or you can use a professional grade grow light. I'll put a link to this one in the video description, as well as other products that I talk about with uh, possible coupon codes for some of them. But for the other two, the long shop light or the clip-on silver metal hood one, those would be the cheapest way, cheaper than this, unless you need a bunch of them, and then this would be cheaper. But for any other light besides this one, you do not need to buy special grow light bulbs. Those will always cost you more money because they're taking advantage of you not knowing that you don't need a grow light bulb. Just go to Home Depot, Lowe's, whoever has a decent amount of uh, light bulbs to choose from. And on the package, you're looking for two numbers, lumens and Kelvin. Lumens is just how bright that light is, the intensity of the light, and Kelvin is the color temperature, so between red and blue. You're trying to mimic the color temperature of sunlight. So for lumens, you're looking for uh, anything between 1,500 and 2,000 lumens. For Kelvin, 4,500 to 6,500 Kelvin. It might also say daylight on the package. That's all you need to look for. It doesn't matter what kind of fancy packaging they come in, just those two numbers are gonna get you what you need. However, with those other two types of lights, not this one, those, the, the, the strength of the light is not anywhere compared to this, or for sure, the sun. And so you need to keep those light bulbs at all times about two to three inches away from the tops of the leaves of your plants. So as those plants grow, you need to either raise the light along with it, or lower the plants away from the light incrementally, but always two to three inches, no more than that, of space between the leaves and the light. With a professional grow light like this one, the light coming from this is intense. I had to turn it on medium because it's just sitting here. That's way too bright to be sitting here looking at it. However, it's so strong, so these can be further away, 12 to 18 inches from the leaves of the plant. So it gives you a much wider footprint that this light will cover. So one of these might take the place of 10 of the round metal kind and maybe three or four of the long fluorescents. So you just have to you know, price out what would be the better cost for you. If you don't provide your plants with enough light, they're gonna get long and what we call leggy. And at that point, especially for peppers, they're past the point of no return. You cannot save them. They will not grow and mature like they should. So you really just need to start over. And you don't wanna do that because they've already got a short season. So just get the light right, you'll have no problems. So as far as how long the lights need to be turned on, they need to be turned on 16 hours and they need to be turned off for eight hours. Now I run mine all night long because electricity, at least for us, is cheaper at night. So that's what they get. Now one more thing to get this environment just perfect for your pepper seedlings uh, once they come up is an old fan just like this. Now this fan is on its last leg. I have it off right now because it creaks and cracks like uh, an old man with arthritis. Um, but what happens is when you turn this on and you want an oscillating one if possible that kind of moves across the area, you can see what it does here to these little pepper plants that I've got. It makes them bend and move and dance in the breeze and that's what you want because all, when they're doing that, they're actually getting strength. It's a workout. They're strengthening their stems. They're getting a lot more uh, robust so that when you put them outside, they're gonna be able to handle a non-perfect garage or whatever condition you have them growing in. Another thing a fan does is it keeps the very top of the potting soil 
and you really do want this to be dried out, so don't water them as soon as you see the tops dry. They don't need it. Keeping that top dry is going to eliminate issues like fungus gnats and uh, damping off. So this isn't essential, but if you've got an old one laying around, it's definitely worth sticking it in this area. Now, once the seedlings are up, the first leaves you see are going to be their seed leaves. Those are not their true leaves. The second set of leaves that grow are their true leaves. And once you see those, you can start to fertilize with a liquid organic fertilizer mixed half strength. So whatever the bottle says, just make it half as strong as that. I happen to use Neptune's Harvest tomato and veg formula for pretty much everything, but, and I do have a discount code for that, so I will leave it down in the video description. Now, we sowed two seeds in each cell, right? So if two come up in each cell, you might think you need to thin them out, maybe either separate them or, or snip one off. But surprisingly, peppers are unique in that they like growing in pairs. For some reason, they grow stronger, they can kind of hold each other up, and they actually produce very well, and you get two times the amount of fruit. So just let them be. All right, that's the first traditional way to start your seeds. For the next way, we need a paper towel and a plastic Ziploc baggie. So first thing I'm gonna do is soak the seeds just like we did on the other one. And while the seeds are soaking, we're going to take a paper towel. So we're gonna moisten the paper towel and wring it out just a little bit. You want it damp, just not like soaking wet. So when you squeeze it, a couple drops might come out. Gonna lay it here on our surface. And this method is good for, in fact, it's people who seriously grow hot peppers, like the really hot ones, which I don't even understand, but uh, they, almost always grow them this way because it's much more effective and faster. Sometimes hot peppers can take up to a month or two to germinate. So you have to have a lot of patience. This will get you there faster. On that paper towel, on half of that paper towel, I'm just gonna spread some seeds out. Fold it over, fold it over again, and then slip it in the bag. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of air in the bag, so I'm not gonna squeeze it out, just so it has a little bit of a cushion. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and write the name on the bag. And then I'm just gonna slide it into an old sock. You can also wrap it in a towel, either way it works. It's just gonna insulate it a little bit from the heat mat. And I'm gonna place it on the heat mat, just like that. Now those seeds, if they are uh, a sweet pepper, they may germinate in about a week. A uh, hot pepper, it might speed it up from you know two months to either a month, three weeks, two weeks. Anything after seven days, start checking your seeds. Just open the paper towel, and what you're looking for is just a the seed cracked open a tiny bit and a little white root coming out. At that point, they've already germinated. So you're gonna take a tray just like this, place them on there, cover them with vermiculite or potting soil, and within a day or two, they will start to sprout above the surface of the soil. And then you just move on exactly like we did before. Now, once you've gone to all this trouble, you don't want a mistake to foul you up later on down the road. So check out this video right here where I go through 10 pepper growing mistakes that you don't want to make and real easy ways to fix them. I'll see you guys next time.